This is Angela from Art of Creation Homestead. And you are in the kitchen with me again today. But I am not making food for us today. I'm going to show you how to make your own homemade hummingbird food. Actually, it's more important than you think to make your own. And it's also way cheaper. So, let's get started on this extremely easy hummingbird recipe. Okay, you will see many different ways of doing this. You will see some people make it, put it in the refrigerator, and let it chill. But to me, this is the easiest way to do it. Now you have to remember, this is a ratio. You do one part sugar to four parts water. So, because I am filling two hummingbird feeders, I'm gonna do a whole recipe. I'm gonna do one cup of sugar to four cups of water. But, what I do, and this makes it super easy, I only put in, like, because I am doing four cups and one cup, I put in one cup of water. If you are only making half a recipe, then you will do a half a cup of water and a half a cup of sugar to start out. You put, I put one cup of water in the microwave let it heat up for about a minute and a half till it's hot enough that it can dissolve my sugar. Now, I'm gonna add one heaping cup of granulated sugar. Now, I am gonna go into some things here while I'm stirring this together because you wanna stir it until it's dissolved. First off, you do not want to use that red junk that's in the bottle in the store. It is bad for hummingbirds. It is not good at all for them. And they like this better anyways. So, and it's, and this, trust me, this is so much cheaper to make than to buy those bottles. And also, do not use a sugar alternative of any sort, even if it's natural. Do not use honey. Do not use maple syrup. Do not use agave. Do not use monk fruit. Do not use Splenda. Do not use any sugar substitute uh, at all because those things can cause problems for the hummingbirds even honey can cause bacteria to grow on their little tongues and then their tongues will swell so big that they can't take them back into their beak and then they'll die anybody who knows me knows that i absolutely love hummingbirds so i'm not gonna let that happen <laughs> we have two hummingbird feeders here Another thing that you want to know is unless you have an incredible, insane amount of hummingbirds at your house, never fill your hummingbirds 100% full. Because, most people don't know this, you need to change those hummingbird feeders. You don't just leave it there until it's empty and then refill it. You need to change those. In regular temperatures, about 70s to low 80s, you will want to change the these out about every two weeks. In 90 or higher temperatures, you wanna change them about once a week because they can start growing bacteria and algae which can hurt the hummingbirds. And also, you're just wasting, you're just wasting ingredients if, if you fill it up because when you have to change it, you have to dump it. So you're just wasting ingredients, you're just wasting sugar. And as you can see, just in that little time while I've been talking, it, the sugar is completely dissolved and you have kind of a thick syrup. Now, you are going to go top it off with the rest of your water. Just regular cold tap water. That's all you need. You don't need to do filtered water or anything like that. Just regular cold tap water. Now, I've filled it up with cold water. Now, you want to stir the two to mix it together. And at this point, basically, you've just made a simple syrup. That's, that's all you've really done. It's made a simple syrup. Like I said, I add a heaping whatever cup because they like a little extra sweetness. So now, you just want to take your hummingbird feeder. Mine is absolutely beautiful. It's a new one that Jason got me this year. He knows I love hummingbird. He knows I love hummingbirds, so he, he got me a, a brand new feeder. I'll show you what it looks like when I get it put back together. Get it filled and put back together, I should say. Now you want to pour it in. I'm using a measuring cup that has a spout because that makes it so much easier to pour back in. 
and I'm pouring in about half my mixture because like I said, I have two hummingbird feeders to fill. So I'm leaving the rest for the other one. And as you can see, if you can see, I've only filled it a little over halfway. And we have some male hummingbirds around here that like to fight over, <laughs> over the feeders. <laughs> so now I'm just gonna screw my base on. Now when you're picking a hummingbird feeder, you wanna pick something with some red on it. Now you will hear, you will see people say, oh, put some red food coloring in your hummingbird food. No, do not put red food coloring in your hummingbird food. You don't need to put red food coloring in your hummingbird food. It's completely unnecessary. Just make sure you have a little red somewhere on your, your hummingbird feeder. You don't need the red. Honestly, they're attracted to just about any color, but red will attract them better. Look at there, isn't that gorgeous? Jason also knows I love butterflies. So he made sure it had butterflies on it as well. Now I'm gonna go ahead and fill up my second one. This, this one isn't brand new, so my second one's already been outside. So I was just dumping it and refilling it. Now you want to, when you dump it, you want to take a minute to wash it out. Just with some warm, warm water. You wanna take a minute to wash it out in case there is any algae or, or any bacteria growing in it. Yes, it, it's still a little bit warm, but it's okay. It's okay if it's a little bit warm. As long as it's barely warm, you don't want it hot. That's why I added the cold tap water because that cools it down. Now we'll take these outside and hang them and I'll show you a little tip to keep those nasty old ants out of your hummingbird feeders. Now I'll show you my little trick to keep ants out of your hummingbird feeders. I keep mine on a shepherd's hook and ants are notorious for climbing up this pole and into your hummingbird feeder. Here's how you stop them. You take a piece of strong tape, preferably duct tape or I'm using Gorilla Tape. You need a piece about like this. And I stick just the end of it to your pole and wrap it backwards so that the sticky part is exposed. And see, now you've got a little sticky band and do two to three more of those in, in different spots on your shepherd's hook. And as the ants try to crawl up, they will hit that sticky tape and they will stick there and they won't even make it to your hummingbird feeder. Now there's our hummingbird feeder filled with homemade hummingbird food. Now all you gotta do is sit back and watch the hummingbirds come and enjoy. We thank you so much for watching. We love you. God bless and have an amazing day.